Hello again. Okay, so in this uh, uh, in this video, I'm going to look at we're going to look at a different uh, piecewise function here. Okay, and this is coming from problem number forty one in section one point two. So we have basically here we have three. Okay, if x is less than zero, and then square root of x if x is bigger or equal to zero. Okay. All right. So. Remember the strategy to do these is to graph, basically graph everything together, okay? And then go back and look at the restrictions and then clean up from there, okay? So the first one is basically just a constant, okay? So in fact, we can express that as y equals three, okay? So no matter what x is, right? No matter what the input variable is, um, we're always getting um, three. In fact, another way to look at that this, okay, so you can say three times x to the zero power, all right, because x to the zero, okay, um, like say, for example, if it's one, you get one to the zero, it's going to be uh, one, okay. All right, and so that's just another way to look at it, okay, so, but, uh, but the point here is that, right, we get basically a constant, okay, basically it's going to look like horizontal line, okay? And for the y-intercept, right, okay, this is going to, this is going to cross, right, at 0, 3, because when x is 0, we get the value of 3 here, okay? So it's going to look something like this. So I'm going to just draw a horizontal line. All right, yeah, it's yeah, not too bad to try to level it out. Okay, there it is. So y equals three, okay? And this is going to be at the coordinate zero comma three, okay? So again, whenever you have y equals the constant, okay? The key, right, that the, your dependent variable is equal to a constant, it's always, right, it's always horizontal, meaning the, the slope is zero, if, okay? Um, if you did. Also, if you recall, if you have x equals to a constant, right, it's going to be a vertical line. For example, x equals to three would be a vertical line that goes to the y, that goes to the x-intercept of three zero. Okay, so vertical lines have undefined slope. Okay, and then horizontal lines always have slope of zero. Okay. All right. So there's our right. There's our um, graph. There's our the graph for the first one. And then this, the other one is square root of x, okay? So this is where it's helpful to recognize what those basis functions are because it turns out that's one of your basis functions. But if you forget, you can always pick some, you know, you can always pick some points and then draw a graph to them. Okay? So let's say, all right, obviously, when x is zero, if you put in zero, square root of zero is going to be zero. Okay, pretty simple. Uh, when x is four, right, we know the square root of four is going to be two. So let's indicate that on here. So one, two, three, four. Okay, and we said that, okay, given that, right, we have when x is equal to four, okay, right? The square root of that is gonna be two, okay? So let's see, let's put that here. And I'll go ahead and write three there. Okay. Okay, again, when, right, when x is four, you get square, of, right, we're gonna get square of four, which is two, okay? So it's gonna look something like this. And again, um, you know, that helps to recognize what those bases, uh, when I say basis function, I mean those parent functions, okay? Uh, we can also, again, we can also put, we pick one more point just to give us, you know, the idea of what's happening, okay? Or give us the general shape. 
Um, so let's use x equals one. one. Square root of one is just one. So there it is. So something like that, okay? Right. Now, and right, um, and remember the domain of square root of x is basically x bigger or equal to zero. Okay, so now we go back and look at our restrictions. Okay, so it's gonna, so this function will be three, right, when x is less than zero. Okay, so here's, right, so, so when x is zero here, okay, um, the function is gonna be three, okay, when, and it's less than zero. And when it goes to the, basically when it goes to the, when you go on the right of the y-axis, that's when x is strictly bigger than zero. So we don't need this part to erase this, okay? And then we have the square root of x. So that's already defined here, x bigger equal to zero. Now the question is, again, you always have to be careful here, okay? We have to be careful where, uh, what's happening along these, um, at these two points. So to, to figure out what's going on here, basically, okay, you see that x is equal. So when x is equal to zero, that's for this function. Okay, so it's on this part. Okay. So that means it's going to be a solid point here. Okay. And then that means for the other one, it's going to be open. Okay. Notice that there's no bar here. Okay. So the overall function is going to do this. Right? So, and then it's going to jump down here when x is exactly zero, it's going to be zero. Okay. And eventually, eventually this graph will intersect this one. Okay. But that gives you, right, that gives you the idea. Okay. That gives you the, uh, basically the graph of this function. Okay. By the way, right, um, if you look here, the domain is going to be for all x, right? For this, right? For this, for all this function. Okay. So no matter what x is, we can get an output, right? You if you pick an x over here, okay, we get some, we're gonna get an output. If x is zero, well, that's gonna give us zero. If x is over here, well, we get an output here. Okay. Okay. So again, I I want to stress the importance of recognizing those basis functions, okay? Because that will help you with a lot of these type of problems and for things that we're going to do later on, okay?